Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Purgatorio, Canto 28 to 33. Purgatorio, Canto 28. Eager already to search in and round the heavenly forest, dense and living green, which tempered to the eyes the newborn day, without and more delay I left the bank, taking the level country slowly, slowly over the soil that everywhere breathes fragrance. A softly breathing air that no mutation had in itself upon the forehead smote me no heavier blow than of a gentle wind whereat the branches, lightly tremulous, did all of them bow downward toward that side where its first shadow casts the holy mountain. Yet not from their upright direction swayed, so that the little birds upon their tops should leave the practice of each art of theirs. But with full ravishment the hours of prime, singing, received they in the midst of leaves that ever bore a burden to their rhymes such as from branch to branch goes gathering on through the pine forest on the shores of Chiasi when Aeolus unlooses the Sirocco. Already my slow steps had carried me into the ancient wood so far that I could not perceive where I had entered it. And lo, my further course a stream cut off, which toward the left hand with its little waves bent down the grass on which its margin sprang. All waters that on earth most limpid are would seem to have within themselves some mixture compared with that which nothing doth conceal, although it moves on with a brown, brown current under the shade perpetual that never ray of the sun lets in, nor of the moon. With feet I stayed, and with mine eyes I passed beyond the rivulet to look upon the great variety of the fresh May. And there appeared to me, even as appears suddenly something that doth turn aside through very wonder every other thought, a lady, all alone, who went along singing and culling floweret after floweret, with which her pathway was all painted over. Ah, beauteous lady, who in rays of love dost warm thyself, if I may trust to looks which the heart's witnesses are wont to be, may the desire come unto thee to draw near to this river's bank, I said to her so much that I might hear what thou art singing. Thou makest me remember where and what Proserpina that moment was when lost her mother her, and she herself the spring. As turns herself, with feet together pressed, and to the ground a lady who is dancing, and hardly puts one foot before the other, on the vermilion and the yellow flowerets, she turned towards me, not in other wise than maiden, who her modest eyes casts down and my entreaties made to be content so near approaching that the dulcet sound came unto me together with its meaning as soon as she was where the grasses are bathed by the waters of the beauteous river to lift her eyes she granted me the boon i do not think there shone so great a light under the lids of venus when transfixed by her own son beyond his usual custom Erect upon the other bank she smiled, bearing full many colors in her hands which that high land produces without seed. Apart three paces did the river make us, but Hellespont, where Xerxes passed across, a curb still to all human arrogance, more hatred from Leander did not suffer for rolling between Cestus and Abydos than that from me, because it oped not then. Ye are newcomers, and because I smile, began she, peradventure in this place elect to human nature for its nest some apprehension keeps you marvelling but the psalm delictasi giveth light which has the power to uncloud your intellect and thou who foremost art and didst entreat me speak if thou wouldst hear more for i came ready to all thy questionings as far as needful the water said i and the forest's sound are combating within me my new faith in something which I heard opposed to this. Whence she, I will relate how from its cause proceedeth that which maketh thee to wonder, and purge away the cloud that smites upon thee. The good supreme, soul in itself delighting, created man good, and this goodly place gave him as hansel of eternal peace. By his default short while he sojourned here, by his default to weeping and to toil he changed his innocent laughter and sweet play. That the disturbance which below is made by exultations of the land and water, which far as may be follow after heat, might not upon mankind wage any war. This mount ascended towards the heavens so high, and is exempt from there where it is locked. 
now since the universal atmosphere turns in a circuit with the primal motion unless the circle is broken on some side upon this height that all is disengaged in living ether doth this motion strike and make the forest sound for it is dense and so much power the stricken plant possesses that with its virtue it impregnates the air and this revolving scatters it around and yonder earth according as tis worthy in self or in its clime conceives and bears of diverse qualities the diverse trees it should not seem a marvel then on earth this being heard whenever any plant without seed manifest there taketh root and thou must know this holy table-land in which thou art is full of every seed and fruit has in it never gathered there the water which thou seest springs not from vein restored by vapour that the cold condenses like to a stream that gains or loses breath but issues from a fountain safe and certain which by the will of god as much regains as it discharges open on two sides upon this side with virtue it descends which takes away all memory of sin on that every good deed done restores it here lethe as upon the other side unui it is called and worketh not if first on either side it be not tasted this every other savour doth transcend and notwithstanding slaked so far may be thy thirst that i reveal to thee no more i'll give thee a corollary still in grace nor think my speech will be to thee less dear if it spread out beyond my promise to thee those who in ancient times have feigned in song the age of gold and its felicity dreamed of this place perhaps upon parnassus here was the human race in innocence here evermore was spring and every fruit this is the nectar of which each one speaks and then backward did i turn me wholly round unto my poets and saw that with a smile they had been listening to these closing words then to the beautiful lady turned mine eyes end of canto twenty eight purgatorio canto twenty nine singing like unto an enamoured lady she with the ending of her words continued beati quorum tecta sunt peccata and even as nymphs that wandered all alone among the sylvan shadows sedulous one to avoid and one to see the sun she then against the stream moved onward going along the bank and i abreast of her her little steps with little steps attending between her steps and mine were not a hundred when equally the margins gave a turn in such a way that to the east i faced nor even thus our way continued far before the lady wholly turned herself unto me saying brother look and listen and lo a sudden lustre ran across on every side athwart the spacious forest such that it made me doubt if it were lightning but since the lightning ceases as it comes and that continuing brightened more and more within my thought i said what thing is this and a delicious melody there ran along the luminous air whence holy zeal made me rebuke the hardihood of eve for there where earth and heaven obedient were the woman only and but just created could not endure to stay neath any veil underneath which had she devoutly stayed i sooner should have tasted those delights ineffable and for a longer time while mid such manifold first fruits i walked of the eternal pleasure all enwrapped and still solicitous of more delights in front of us like an enkindled fire became the air beneath the verdant boughs and the sweet sound as singing now was heard o virgin sacrosanct if ever hunger vigils or cold for you i have endured the occasion spurs me their reward to claim now helicon must needs pour forth for me and with her choir urania must assist me to put in verse things difficult to think a little further on seven trees of gold in semblance the long space still intervening between ourselves and them did counterfeit but when i had approached so near to them the common object which the sense deceives lost not by distance any of its marks the faculty that lends discourse to reason did apprehend that they were candlesticks and in the voices of the song hosanna above them flamed the harness beautiful far brighter than the moon in the serene of midnight at the middle of her month 
I turned me round with admiration filled to the good Virgilius, and he answered me with visage no less full of wonderment. Then back I turned my face to those high things, which moved themselves towards us so sedately they had been distanced by new-wedded brides. The lady chid me. Why dost thou burn only so with affection for the living lights, and dost not look at what comes after them? Then saw I people, as behind their leaders, coming behind them, garmented in white, and such a whiteness never was on earth. The water on my left flank was resplendent, and back to me reflected my left side, even as a mirror, if I looked therein. When upon my margin had such post that nothing but the stream divided us, better to see I gave my steps repose. And I beheld the flamelets onward go, leaving behind themselves the air depicted, and they of trailing pennons had the semblance, so that it overhead remained distinct with sevenfold lists, all of them of the colors whence the sun's bow is made, and Delia's girdle. These standards to the rearward longer were than was my sight, and, as it seemed to me, ten paces were the outermost apart. Under so fair a heaven as I describe, the four-and-twenty elders, two by two, came in coronet with flower de luce. They, all of them, were singing, Blessed thou among the daughters of Adam art, and blessed for evermore shall be thy loveliness. After the flowers and other tender grasses in front of me upon the other margin were disencumbered of that race elect, even as in heaven star followeth after star, there came close after them four animals, in coronet each one with verdant leaf. Plumed with six wings was every one of them, the plumage full of eyes, the eyes of Argus, if they were living, would be such as these. Reader, to trace their forms no more I waste my rhymes, for other spendings press me so, that I, in this, cannot be prodigal. But read Ezekiel, who depicteth them, as he beheld them from the region cold, coming with cloud, with whirlwind, and with fire. And such as thou shalt find them in his pages, such were they here, saving that in their plumage John is with me, and differeth from him. The interval between these four contained a chariot, triumphal on two wheels, which by a griffin's neck came drawn along. And upward he extended both his wings between the middle list and three and three, so that he injured none by cleaving it. So high they rose that they were lost to sight. His limbs were gold so far as he was bird, and white the others with vermilion mingled. Not only Rome, with no such splendid car, e'er gladdened Africanus or Augustus, but poor to it that of the sun would be. That of the sun, which swerving was burnt up at the importunate orison of earth, when Jove was so mysteriously just. Three maidens at the right wheel in a circle came onward dancing, one so very red, that in the fire she hardly had been noted. The second was as if her flesh and bones had all been fashioned out of emerald. The third appeared as snow, but newly fallen. And now they seemed conducted by the white, now by the red, and from the song of her the others took their step, or slow or swift. Upon the left hand four made holiday, vested in purple, following the measure of one of them with three eyes in her head. In rear of all the group here treated of two old men I beheld, unlike in habit, but like in gait, each dignified and grave. One showed himself as one of the disciples of that supreme Hippocrates, whom nature made for the animal she holds most dear. Contrary care the other manifested, with swords so shining and so sharp it caused terror to me on this side of the river. Thereafter four I saw of humble aspect, and behind all an aged man alone, walking in sleep with countenance acute. And like the foremost company these seven were habited, yet of the flower de luci no garland round about the head they wore, but that of rose and other flowers vermilion. At little distance would the sight have sworn that all were in a flame above their brows. And when the car was opposite to me, thunder was heard, and all that folk august seemed to have further progress interdicted there with the vanward ensigns standing still end of purgatorio canto twenty nine when the septentrion of the highest heaven 
which never either setting new or rising nor veil of other cloud than that of sin and which made every one therein aware of his own duty as the lower makes whoever turns the helm to come to port motionless halted the voracious people that came at first between it and the griffin turned themselves to the car as to their peace and one of them as if by heaven commissioned singing veni sponsa de libano shouted three times and all the others after even as the blessed at the final summons shall rise up quickened each one from his cavern uplifting light the reinvested flesh so upon that celestial chariot a hundred rose ad vocem tante senis ministers and messengers of life eternal they all were saying benedictus qui venis and scattering flowers above and round about manibus odate lilia plenis ere now have i beheld as day began the eastern hemisphere all tinged with rose and the other heaven with fair serene adorned and the sun's face uprising overshadowed so that by tempering influence of vapours for a long interval the eye sustained it thus in the bosom of a cloud of flowers which from those hands angelical ascended and downward fell again inside and out over her snow-white veil with olive synced appeared a lady under a green mantle vested in colour of the living flame and my own spirit that already now so long a time had been that in her presence trembling with awe it had not stood abashed without more knowledge having by mine eyes through occult virtue that from her proceeded of ancient love and mighty influence felt as soon as on my vision smote the power sublime that had already pierced me through ere from my boyhood i had yet come forth to the left hand i turned with that reliance with which the little child runs to his mother when he has fear or when he is afflicted to say unto virgilius not a drachm of blood remains in me that does not tremble i know the traces of the ancient flame but us virgilius of himself deprived had left virgilius sweetest of all fathers virgilius to whom i for safety gave me nor whatsoever lost the ancient mother availed my cheeks now purified from dew that weeping they should not again be darkened dante because virgilius has departed do not weep yet do not weep yet a while for by another sword thou needst must weep e'en as an admiral who on poop and prow comes to behold the people that are working in other ships and cheers them to well-doing upon the left-hand border of the car when at the sound i turned of my own name which of necessity is here recorded i saw the lady who erewhile appeared veiled underneath the angelic festival direct her eyes to me across the river although the veil that from her head descended encircled with the foliage of minerva did not permit her to appear distinctly in attitude still royally majestic continued she like unto one who speaks and keeps his warmest utterance in reserve look at me well in sooth i'm beatrice how didst thou deign to come unto the mountain didst thou not know that man is happy here mine eyes fell downward into the clear fountain but seeing myself therein i sought the grass so great a shame did weigh my forehead down as to the sun the mother seemed superb so she appeared to me for somewhat bitter tasted the savour of severe compassion silent became she and the angel sang suddenly in te domini speravi but beyond pedis meus did not pass even as the snow among the living rafters upon the back of italy congeals blown on and drifted by sclavonian winds and then dissolving trickles through itself whene'er the land that loses shadow breathes so that it seems a fire that melts a taper e'en thus was i without a tear or sigh before the song of those who sing forever after the music of the eternal spheres but when i heard in their sweet melodies compassion for me more than had they said o oh, wherefore lady dost thou thus upbraid him the ice that was about my heart congealed to air and water changed and in my anguish through mouth and eyes came gushing from my breast she on the right hand border of the car still firmly standing to those holy beings thus her discourse directed afterwards ye keep your watch in the eternal day so that nor night nor sleep can steal from you one step the ages make upon their path therefore 
my answer is with greater care that he may hear me who is weeping yonder so that the sin and dole be of one measure not only by the work of those great wheels that destine every seed unto some end according as the stars are in conjunction but by the largesse of celestial graces which have such lofty vapours for their reign that near to them our sight approaches not such had this man become in his new life potentially that every righteous habit would have made admirable proof in him but so much more malignant and more savage becomes the land untilled and with bad seed the more good earthly vigour it possesses some time did i sustain him with my look revealing unto him my youthful eyes i led him with me turned in the right way as soon as ever of my second age i was upon the threshold and changed life himself from me he took and gave to others when from the flesh to spirit i ascended and beauty and virtue were in me increased i was to him less dear and less delightful and into ways untrue he turned his steps pursuing the false images of good that never any promises fulfil nor prayer for inspiration me availed by means of which in dreams and otherwise i called him back so little did he heed them so low he fell that all appliances for his salvation were already short save showing him the people of perdition for this i visited the gates of death and unto him who so far up has led him my intercessions were with weeping born god's lofty fiat would be violated if lethe should be passed and if such viands should tasted be without in any scot of penitence that gushes forth in tears end of canto thirty purgatorio canto thirty one o thou who art beyond the sacred river turning to me the point of her discourse that edgewise even had seemed to me so keen she recommenced continuing without pause say if this be true to such a charge thy own confessions need must be conjoined my faculties were in so great confusion that the voice moved but sooner was extinct than by its organs it was set at large a while she waited and then she said what thinkest answer me for the mournful memories in thee not yet are by the waters injured confusion and dismay together mingled forced such a yes from out my mouth that sight was needful to the understanding of it even as a crossbow breaks when tis discharged too tensely drawn the bowstring and the bow and with less force the arrow hits the mark so i gave way beneath that heavy burden outpouring in a torrent tears and sighs and the voice flagged upon its passage forth whence she to me in those desires of mine which led thee to the loving of that good beyond which there is nothing to aspire to what trenches lying traverse or what chains didst thou discover that of passing onward thou shouldst have thus despoiled thee of the hope and what allurements or what vantages upon the forehead of the others showed that thou shouldst turn thy footsteps unto them after the heaving of a bitter sigh hardly had i the voice to make response and with fatigue my lips did fashion it weeping i said the things that present were with their false pleasure turned aside my steps soon as your countenance concealed itself and she shouldst thou be silent or deny what thou confessest not less manifest would be thy fault by such a judge tis known but when from one's own cheeks comes bursting forth the accusal of the sin in our tribunal against the edge the wheel doth turn itself but still that thou mayst feel a greater shame for thy transgression and another time hearing the sirens thou mayst be more strong cast down the seed of weeping and attend so shalt thou hear how in an opposite way my buried flesh should have directed thee never to thee presented art or nature pleasure so great as the fair limbs wherein i was enclosed which scattered are in earth and if the highest pleasure thus did fail thee by reason of my death what mortal thing should then have drawn thee into its desire thou oughtst verily at the first shaft of things fallacious have risen up to follow me who was no longer such thou oughtest not to have stooped thy pinions downward to wait for further blows or little girl or other vanity of such brief use the callow birdlet waits for two or three but to the eyes of those already fledged in vain the net is spread or shaft is shot 
even as children silent in their shame stand listening with their eyes upon the ground and conscious of their fault and penitent so was i standing and she said if thou in hearing sufferest pain lift up thy beard and thou shalt feel a greater pain in seeing with less resistance is a robust home uprooted either by a native wind or else by that from regions of Erebus, than i upraised at her command my chin and when she by the beard the face demanded well i perceived the venom of her meaning and as my countenance was lifted up mine eye perceived those creatures beautiful had rested from the strewing of the flowers and still but little reassured mine eye saw beatrice turned round towards the monster that is one person only in two natures beneath her veil beyond the margined green she seemed to me far more her ancient self to excel than others here when she was here so pricked me then the thorn of penitence that of all other things the one which turned me most to its love became the most my foe such self-conviction stung me at the heart overpowered i fell and what i then became she knoweth who had furnished me the cause then when the heart restored my outward sense the lady i had found alone above me i saw and she was saying hold me hold me up to my throat she in the stream had drawn me and dragging me behind her she was moving upon the water lightly as a shuttle when i was near unto the blessed shore Aspergus me, I heard so sweetly sung, remember it I cannot, much less ride it. The beautiful lady opened wide her arms, embraced my head, and plunged me underneath, where I was forced to swallow of the water. Then forth she drew me, and all dripping brought into the dance of the four beautiful, and each one with her arm did cover me. We hear our nymphs, and in the heaven our stars, ere Beatrice descended to the world, we as her handmaidens were appointed her. We'll lead thee to her eyes, but, for the pleasant light that within them is, shall sharpen thine and three beyond who more profoundly look. Thus singing they began, and afterwards unto the griffin's breast they led me with them, where Beatrice was standing, turned towards us. See that thou dost not spare thine eyes, they said before the emeralds have we stationed thee whence love aforetime drew for thee his weapons a thousand longings hotter than the flame fastened my eyes upon those eyes relucent that still upon the griffin steadfast stayed as in the glass the sun not otherwise within them was the twofold monster shining now with one now with the other nature think reader if within myself I marveled when I beheld the thing itself stand still, and in its image it transformed itself. While with amazement filled and jubilant my soul was tasting of the food that while it satisfies us, makes us hunger for it. Themselves revealing of the highest rank and bearing did the other three advance, singing to their angelic saraband, Turn, Beatrice, O oh, turn thy holy eyes! Such was their song unto thy faithful one who has to see thee taken so many steps in grace do us the grace that thou unveil thy face to him so that he may discern the second beauty which thou dost conceal o splendor of the living light eternal who underneath the shadow of parnassus has grown so pale or drunk so at its cistern he would not seem to have his mind encumbered striving to paint thee as thou didst appear where the harmonious heaven o'ershadowed thee when in the open air thou didst unveil end of canto thirty one purgatorio canto thirty two so steadfast and attentive were mine eyes in satisfying their decennial thirst that all my other senses were extinct and upon this side and on that they had walls of indifference so the holy smile drew them unto itself with the old net when forcibly my sight was turned away towards my left hand by those goddesses because i heard from them a too intently and that condition of the sight which is in eyes but lately smitten by the sun bereft me of my vision some short while but to the less when sight reshaped itself i say to the less in reference to the greater splendor from which i perforce had withdrawn i saw upon its right wing wheeled about the glorious host returning with the sun and with the sevenfold flames upon their faces 
as underneath its shield to save itself a squadron turns and with its banner wheels before the whole thereof can change its front that soldiery of the celestial kingdom which marched in the advance had wholly passed us before the chariot had turned its pole then to the wheels the maidens turned themselves and the griffin moved his burden benedite but so that not a feather of him fluttered the lady fair who drew me through the ford followed with Statius and myself the wheel which made its orbit with the lesser arc. So passing through the lofty forest, vacant by fault of her who the serpent trusted, angelic music made our steps keep time. Perchance as great a space had in three flights an arrow loosed from the string or passed as we had moved when Beatrice descended. I heard them murmur altogether, Adam! then circled they about a tree despoiled of blooms and other leafage on each bough its tresses which so much the more dilate as higher they ascend had been by indians among their forests marvelled at for height blessed art thou o griffin who dost not pluck with thy beak these branches sweet to taste since appetite by this was turned to evil after this fashion round the tree robust the others shouted and the twofold creature Thus is preserved the seed of all the just. And turning to the pole which he had dragged, he drew it close beneath the widowed bough, and what was of it unto it left bound. In the same manner as our trees, when downward falls the great light, with that together mingled which after the celestial Alaska shines, begin to swell, and then renew themselves, each one with its own color, ere the sun harness his steeds beneath another star, less than of rose, and more than violet a hue disclosing, was renewed the tree that had erewhile its boughs so desolate. I never heard, nor here below is sung, the hymn which afterward the people sang, nor did I bear the melody throughout. Had I the power to paint how fell asleep those eyes compassionless of Syrinx hearing, those eyes to which more watching cost so dear, even as a painter who from model paints I would portray how I was lulled asleep, he may who well can picture drowsyhood. Therefore I pass to what time I awoke, and say a splendor rent from me the veil of slumber and a calling rise what dost thou as to behold the apple tree in blossom which makes the angels greedy for its fruit and keeps perpetual bridles in the heaven peter and john and james conducted were and overcome recovered at the word by which still greater slumbers have been broken and saw their school diminished by the loss not only of elias but of moses and the apparel of their master changed. So I revived, and saw that piteous one above me standing, who had been conductress aforetime of my steps beside the river, and all in doubt I said, Where's Beatrice? And she, Behold her seated underneath the leafage new upon the root of it, behold the company that circles her, the rest behind the griffin are ascending with more melodious song and more profound. And if her speech were more diffuse I know not, because already in my sight was she who from the hearing of aught else had shut me. Alone she sat upon the very earth, left there as guardian of the chariot which I had seen the biform monster fasten. And circling her, a cloister made themselves the seven nymphs, with those lights in their hands which are secure from Acalon to Oster. Short while shalt thou be here a forester, and thou shalt be with me for evermore a citizen of that Rome where Christ is Roman. Therefore, for that world's good which liveth ill, fix on the car thine eyes, and what thou seest, having returned to earth, take heed thou right. Thus Beatrice, and I, who at the feet of her commandments all devoted was, my mind and eyes directed where she willed never descended with so swift a motion fire from a heavy cloud when it is raining from out the region which is most remote as i beheld the bird of jove descended down through the tree rending away the bark as well as blossoms and foliage new and he with all his might the chariot smote whereat it reeled like a vessel in a tempest tossed by the waves now starboard now larboard Thereafter saw I leap into the body of the triumphal vehicle a fox that seemed unfed with any wholesome food. But for his hideous sins upbraiding him, my lady put him to as swift a flight as such a fleshless skeleton could bear. Then, by the way that it before had come, into the chariot's chest I saw the eagle descend and leave it feathered with his plumes. 
and such as issues from a heart that mourns a voice from heaven there issued and it said my little bark how badly art thou frightened methought then that the earth did yawn between both wheels and i saw rise from it a dragon who threw the chariot upward fixed his tail and as a wasp that draweth back its sting drawing unto himself his tail malign drew out the floor and went his way rejoicing that which remained behind even as with grass a fertile region with the feathers offered perhaps with pure intention and benign reclothed itself and with them were reclothed the pole and both the wheels so speedily a sigh doth longer keep the lips apart transfigured thus the holy edifice thrust forward heads upon the parts of it three on the pole and one at either corner the first were horned like oxen but the four had but a single horn upon the forehead a monster such had never yet been seen firm as a rock upon a mountain high seated upon it there appeared to me a shameless whore with eyes swift glancing round and as if not to have her taken from him upright beside her i beheld a giant and ever and on they kissed each other but because she her wanton roving eye turned upon me her angry paramour did scourge her from her head unto her feet then full of jealousy and fierce with wrath he loosed the monster and across the forest dragged it so far he made of that alone a shield unto the whore and the strange beast end of canto thirty two purgatorio canto thirty three Deus venerunt gentes, alternating, now three, now four, melodious psalmody the maidens in the midst of tears began, and Beatrice, compassionate and sighing, listened to them with such a countenance that scarce more changed was Mary at the cross. But, when the other virgins place had given for her to speak, uprisen to her feet, with color as of fire, she made response, Modicum et non videbitis me, et iterum, my sister's predilect modicum et vos videbitis me then all the seven in front of her she placed and after her by beckoning only moved me and the lady and the sage who stayed so she moved onward and i do not think that her tenth step was placed upon the ground when with her eyes upon mine eyes she smote and with a tranquil aspect come more quickly to me she said that if i speak with thee to listen to me thou mayst be well placed as soon as i was with her as i should be she said to me why brother dost thou not venture to question now in coming with me and unto those who are too reverential speaking in presence of superiors who drag no living utterance to their teeth it me befell that without perfect sound began i my necessity madonna you know and that which thereunto is good and she to me of fear and bashfulness henceforward i will have thee strip thyself so that thou speak no more as one who dreams know that the vessel which the serpent broke was and is not but let him who is guilty think that god's vengeance does not fear a sop without an heir shall not forever be the eagle that left his plumes upon the car whence it became a monster then a prey for verily i see and hence narrate it the stars already near to bring the time from every hindrance safe and every bar within which a five hundred ten and five one sent from god shall slay the thievish woman and that same giant who is sinning with her and peradventure my dark utterance like themis and the sphinx may less persuade thee since in their mode it clouds the intellect but soon the fact shall be the naiades who shall this difficult enigma solve without destruction of the flocks and harvests note thou and even as by me are uttered these words so teach them unto those who live that life which is a running unto death and bear in mind whene'er thou writest them not to conceal what thou hast seen the plant that twice already has been pillaged here whoever pillages or shatters it with blasphemy of deed offendeth god who made it holy for his use alone for biding that, in pain and in desire, five thousand years and more the firstborn soul craved him who punished in himself the bite. Thy genius slumbers, if it deem it not for special reasons so preeminent in height and so inverted in its summit, and if thy vain imaginings had not been water of Elsa round about thy mind, and Pyramus to the mulberry their pleasure, thou by so many circumstances only the justice of the interdict of God morally in the tree wouldst recognize. 
but since i see thee in thine intellect converted into stone and stained with sin so that the light of my discourse doth daze thee i will too if not written at least painted thou bear it back within thee for the reason that synced with palm the pilgrim's staff is born and i as by a signet is the wax which does not change the figure stamped upon it my brain is now imprinted by yourself but wherefore so beyond my power of sight soars your desirable discourse that i the more i strive so much the more i lose it that thou mayest recognize she said the school which thou hast followed and mayest see how far its doctrine follows after my discourse and mayst behold your path from the divine distant as far as separated is earth from the heaven that highest hastens on whence her i answered i do not remember that ever i estranged myself from you nor have i conscience of it that reproves me and if thou art not able to remember smiling she answered recollect thee now that thou this very day hast drunk of lethe and if from smoke of fire may be inferred such an oblivion clearly demonstrates some error in thy will elsewhere intent truly from this time forward shall my words be naked so far as it is befitting to lay them open unto thy rude gaze and more coruscant with slower steps the sun was holding the meridian circle which with the point of view shifts here and there when halted as he cometh to a halt who goes before a squadron as its escort if something new he find upon his way the lady seven at a dark shadow's edge such as beneath green leaves and branches black the elp upon its frigid border wears in front of them the tigress and euphrates methought i saw forth issue from one fountain and slowly part like friends from one another o light o glory of the human race what stream is this which here unfolds itself from out one source and from itself withdraws for such a prayer twas said unto me pray matilda that she tell thee and here answered as one does who doth free himself from blame the beautiful lady this and other things were told to him by me and sure i am the water of lethe has not hid them from him and beatrice perhaps a greater care which oftentimes our memory takes away has made the vision of his mind obscure but you know we behold that yonder rises lead him to it and as thou art accustomed revive again the half-dead virtue in him like gentle soul that maketh no excuse but makes its own will of another's will as soon as by a sign it is disclosed even so when she had taken hold of me the beautiful lady moved and unto statius said in her womanly manner come with him if reader i possessed a longer space for writing it i yet would sing in part of the sweet draught that ne'er would satiate me but inasmuch as full are all the leaves made ready for this second canticle the curb of art no farther lets me go from that most holy water i returned regenerate in the manner of new trees that are renewed with a new foliage pure and disposed to mount unto the stars end of purgatorio canto twenty eight to thirty two end of the divine comedy purgatorio by Dante Alighieri and translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow.